All right, this is Mr. Jern again, and I am here to walk you through Project Lead the Way Principles of Engineering Activity 2.3.2, the Tensile Testing Simulation. Okay, I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm just going to walk through and hopefully try to clarify some of the instructions in this activity. So I would definitely recommend you remember that this is at the top. Okay, this is a... Uh, that didn't help much. <laughs> oh, there was a zoom at the top. There, this is a anatomy chart of the different parts of a stress strain curve. And uh, in this case, load versus extension, which is very much related. So it tells you about the elastic deformation area, the proportional limit, which we're going to get into right away, the yield point, uh, which is at the point at which you know the elastic deformation ceases, ultimate tensile strength. This is the point at which um, the 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 material will no longer stretch, um, or rather, it takes less and less force. After this. this is the strongest it is. This is the part where it takes the most force to keep stressing. After this point, it takes less and less force, and then eventually failure. So you have uh, the elastic deformation is the area under this line, this little triangle. Plastic deformation is the part at which it it you get that elongation that. Uh, that necking and that stretching out, like when you're stretching out gum. Anyway, so refer to this often. In fact, it might not be a bad idea to have this printed out or on another screen or something like that uh, because it's gonna, you're going to be coming back to it a lot. You're definitely going to need vernier graphical analysis for. You probably have used it before, so I'm not too worried about that. Here's all the resources which will be clickable within the instructions themselves. So we're gonna be focusing on these tensile tests and you can read all this, you can watch this video. Here's a actual video of a tensile uh, test happening and it gets into, it gives you all this information here. You should definitely watch it and see a real one happening. Okay, um, if this talks about models. Uh, it's how we um, engineers will use models to represent reality. So that stress strain curve is a model that represents the reality of, well, the materials property, the, pro the material properties of different materials. Okay, so um, you could definitely check out that. Okay, so here is a simulation of three different metals and you can just click on aluminum. You can see as, um, as it stretches, the amount of force in pounds, it, here's the, it's basically a force versus displacement graph. Okay, so and you can see when it breaks, the force is, you know, drops down to zero because, well, it's done. All right, so you can uh, just kind of try that out a few times. Um, keeping it in mind, let me just scroll back up. This graph shows force versus displacement. Now, that's a, there's a problem there is that um, that force is going to depend on a couple of things, and the displacement is going to depend on a couple of things. Um, the thickness of the dog bone of the piece of material being tested and the length of the piece of material being uh, uh, st uh, stretched and uh, tested. And so we have to deal with that. That's what this note is all about. And so rather than using just straight up force, we're gonna be using something called stress, which again, go back to the notes on this, stress has to do with uh, the force per cross-sectional area. And then instead of strain, which is just uh, or I'm sorry, instead of uh, displacement, how far it's stretched, we're going to be using strain, which is how far it is stretched divided by the original length. So, I mean, something that's short compared, is going to stretch uh, differently compared to the same material that's longer. Okay, it just, there's more to stretch if it's longer, so it'll stretch more if it's longer. If you start out with a, with a piece that's longer. Um, so we, we do it like a, uh, instead of displacement, straight up displacement, we had to take into account how long was it originally. So that'll be strain, we'll get to that too. Okay, step one, you're gonna run the simulation, you're gonna open this up. Okay, there's a, there's a file that goes with aluminum sample one. You're gonna click on this data file, download it, and open it up in graphical analysis. Make sure that graphical analysis is closed before you try to open up a new graphical analysis file. And when you click on that and you open it up, it should look something like this. Actually, it should look exactly like this, okay? So, 
nothing to write for that one. Okay, nothing to record for for part for step one, part A. Part B though, it says to label the point on the force versus display, display, displacement graph that corresponds to the proportional limit. So I would scroll back up and see where is the proportional limit on this graph. Um, and if you remember, the proportional limit is basically where um, the uh, force versus displacement is no longer proportional to each other. In other words, you could see there's, this, so we're gonna kind of ignore this little mess at the beginning. Uh, th this is real life data, so it's not gonna be as clean and pretty as some of the diagrams, right? So uh, this long section here is a pretty good uh, proportional area. In other words, it's, as, as force increases, the displacement increases proportionally. So somewhere around here, you're gonna click on there maybe, and f just you decide where is the proportional limit, all right? Where is the limit to this proportionality? And you could just click anywhere. It's kind of nice. You, you can just click anywhere you want to, and it'll it'll follow you there. Uh, but then you could just, if you see my cursor, it changes into a little side arrows. You could just scooch it along to you know, try to get a little bit better. And it'll tell you uh, down here. It'll tell you the x uh, values. In this case, the, the, the how far it's stretched in inches. And the little dot here will tell you the force in pounds. Okay, so this will tell you the y value down here is gonna be the x value. So you decide where is a proportional limit, use that anatomy chart at the top of the instructions to help you decide for sure. Okay, and you're going to uh, you know, try, you're gonna label that all right, on, on the thing. It's, it's pretty straightforward how you do that. <clears throat> um, one option you have is to actually print a copy of the graph and annotate it by hand. Okay, that's, that's the like default option. If you don't have a printer, you don't have access to a printer, uh, you can uh, just create an electronic version of the graph. You already have it. You just might have to take a picture of it when you're done, a screenshot. If you don't know how to do that, just let me know. Um, one of your last options, I suppose, if like there's absolutely no other options, is to try to maybe redraw it by hand or something like that and get it into your engineering notebook. So ideally, you'd like to print a copy out and then cut it out and then tape it or paste it into your engineering notebook. All right, so this is kind of uh, getting into the, this, this idea here is that the graph that you're looking at, this graph right here, deals with force and displacement. But what we wanna deal with is stress, not just plain old force, because a thicker piece is gonna, have a, is gonna take a different amount of force to stretch it than the thinner piece would. So stress is that force divided by the cross-sectional area. And that's what you really want to focus on. Okay, so take a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the stress at that proportional limit. Okay, we're going to calculate the proportional limit. What is the stress? How much force per area can that material take before you get into plastic deformation? So you're gonna write some stuff down in your engineering notebook for this. And all it is, it's this equation right here. So stress, and remember, don't let these Greek letters bother you. These Greek letters are just, just ideas, they're just, they're just measurements or calculations. They don't, they don't, they're, they look scary, but they're, they're not. They just stand for things that most people don't use every day, but engineers might. So if you remember on that, um, materials uh, formula sheet, materials testing formula sheet. You can look it up if you ever want to. Also, I think it's at the top of this page. Um, that symbol right there is stress. So stress is what we're gonna find at the proportional limit. So on your graph, you're gonna wanna find the force and the cross, you wanna find the force at the, at the proportional limit. So you go here, let's say, I don't know, hmm try this there we go let's say the proportional limit is it, wherever you decide it's going to be okay let's say the proportional limit is 532 pounds that's the that's the force at the proportional limit right so what you're going to want to do then is take that force and divide it by the cross-sectional area okay the initial cross-sectional area before it gets all stretched out and starts to neck so guess what's right here 
we have original diameter, okay? And if you remember, cross-sectional area, if you, if you remember from your um, materials formula sheet, cross-sectional areas, my, you, have to, my, my, you might have to look this up, is, uh, where did it go? Is pi r squared. Wow, I didn't want to get it wrong, so I completely blinked. Pi r squared. So look at your equation sheet, and you will you'll remember that, just like me. Uh, so pi r squared. Here's the, here's the diameter. So you're gonna take half of that. Okay. And if you need help with these, just let me know. But just find the area. It's 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 simple geometry, I suppose. Okay. So that's what you're gonna have for letter C. Letter D. Label the yield point and the corresponding coordinates on the graph. Okay. Go back up to uh, the top to find out where the yield point is. Um, it's it's the point at which a sudden elongation takes place while the force remains about the same. Well, what do you know? There was a place where the um, it started to stretch out while the force remains sort of the same-ish. You're gonna have to make a judgment call on that one. Okay, maybe it's here, maybe it's down there. You make the judgment call on that one. Where do you see, just look at the diagram at the top and see if you can find the um, proportional um, uh, yeah, <laughs> the yield point. I uh, so find the yield point. Okay, just label it. Just label it, and you're on the little graph either by hand or make a little note on the on the graph itself. Okay, and keep in mind if you're having trouble identifying it, this little note here. Most materials don't have a very well defined yield point. Okay, like I said, it's not going to be like a perfect like it is in the diagrams. So it says you can use a tangent feature in graphical analysis to help you estimate it. Uh, it's kind of neat because, well, take a look at this. Um, I'll, I'll show you on here too. Uh, let me, let's just switch over to that. So the tangent feature is down here under the graph tools. And if you click on that, you click on tangent, you can really see, okay, let's actually not go near the point. You can see where the slope suddenly changes. Okay, it's like, pretty constant for a while and then boop it starts to suddenly change it's a pretty good indication that you found the yield point at that point i'm going to turn off the tangent feature i'm going to actually get rid of that okay so that is letter well d letter d just label the yield point make sure it's pretty clear okay letter e calculate the yield stress once again, Greek letters, all these, ah, is that crazy, right? Um, I can't do this. No, you can do this. Just look at this. So we want the yield stress. What that means is, so here's that sigma again, mean, meaning uh, that's the stress, okay? That is, <clears throat> that is the stress. So we got to calculate the stress at the point where it yields, where it starts to uh, get into plastic deformation. So all this means... I know it looks intimidating, but it's not. Stress at the yield point. That's what this is saying, stress at the yield point. Okay, take a deep breath. I know there's a lot of letters all crammed in and they're all like, you got like subscripts and ah, but no, it's take your time on this one. Stress at the yield point, trust me, it gets easier. It does. Okay, it might not get as much easier this year, but if you go further with this, it gets easier. And for to calculate the, the yield stress, the stress at the yield point, you take the force at the yield point divided by the cross-sectional area, the initial cross-sectional area. You've already calculated the initial cross-sectional area. You just got to go and find the actual uh, force at whatever you decide the yield point is. Maybe it's 578 pounds, okay? So that's what you're gonna do. You take that, whatever the force is at the yield point, divided by the cross-sectional area that you already calculated. Then, on the graph, that was, that was letter E. The letter F is on the graph now, again, so we're kind of bouncing back and forth. Label the ultimate tensile strength point and the corresponding coordinates. Okay, I'm just, remember, the ultimate tensile strength is the point at which no more force can be applied. That's the most force it can take. The most, or in our case, the most stress it can take. It's force and stress is, is fine to use here. 
So you decide where is the maximum amount of force that this thing was able to take before it broke or before it started you know, going back downhill again, all right? And so to calculate that, now look at it. What is, yeah, more, more subscripts. Ah, it's scary, it's scary. No, it's not scary. Stop, Shh. breath, take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, Greek letter sigma, that means stress, okay? What is the stress? You're gonna calculate this. Okay, remember stress is just force per area. You've done it already in those in those in the practice. Okay, it's it's in the practice. You've you've seen it done. All this means is what is the ultimate tensile strength? Stress. Stress ultimate is what this is saying here. Okay. And all that all stress is is the force per area. First per, per, per uh, initial area, which you've already calculated. Like you, you calculated that already. So what is the force? Okay, going back to here, in, in my case, let's say I'm guessing, uh, let's, I'm gonna guess incorrectly here. Let's say I'm incorrect here and I say 636, right? It's, it's gonna be like more at the top here. So I'm not gonna like tell you. So six blah, blah, blah. That's the force divided by the cross-sectional area that you already figured out, two pi r. Uh, pi r squared. Oh, see, this is why you have equation sheets. Maybe pi r squared, yeah, pi r squared, okay? So that's what this is all about, okay? So here's a little note, just to remind you. Remember, this is all brand new to you. If you're just barely keeping your nose above water here, that's normal. I mean, sh trust me, it's normal. Ultimate tensile, so beyond this, um, it still continues to stretch, but the force it takes to do so decreases. If you've ever stretched gum and more than once, you'll notice when you're stretching the gum, at first it's kind of hard to stretch, difficult to stretch. And then at some point it just sort of like, bleh, you know, or silly putty if you're not gross like me and you've never actually stretched gum. So chewing gum, it's a material. So, it, you know, you could use that as, a, as an analogy here. So for letter G, you should have a calculation and uh, along with an answer. I would recommend putting little circles or boxes around your final answer, by the way. Letter H, back to the graph. Label the section of your graph that represents elastic deformation. Go back to the diagram at the very top of this. Find out where uh, elastic, or what, where on the graph elastic deformation is taking place. Okay, so let me move somewhere around here. Okay, elastic means that when it's let go, it's going to return back to its original shape. Okay, so that's just a label. Um, use the label similar if you want to shade in or whatever, however you want to do it, okay, as long as it's clear. Letter I, you're going to have some writing again. More calculations. M calculate the modulus of elasticity, okay? Remember, modulus of, of, modulus of elastic, that thing, is just a measurement of how stiff a, a material is, how flexible it is. And that modulus of elasticity is not stamped on the bottom of, of materials. You know, it's not, it doesn't come with labels when it's when we find it in the ground um, or cut it down or whatever. Calculate it. So a modulus of elasticity is going to be this hot mess right here. So once again, very intimidating looking, but break it down and it's not so bad. In fact, it tells you um, F1 and this little doohickey here. Remember that? That's from your equation sheet. That is a lowercase delta. That's here, it tells you right here. Uh, two points, force versus displacement diagram in the linear elastic region. So um, if you remember from your material sheet, this is the total deformation or elongation. That's, that's, that's what that is all about. That's what's going on here, okay? So in other words, well, not in other words, it's, it's two points. What is, what is the displacement, okay? So, um, not quite it's 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 not quite that simple though be careful it's not the it's not the current length it's this get look at your equation sheet trust me you have to do the subtraction it's the change in length okay so let's see okay here calculate the so we want i'm gonna i'm gonna walk you through this i told you i was gonna do it okay elastic deformation Okay, so let's say it's, let's just start at zero, zero, just for funsies. Okay, let's say it goes up to here, all right? I know there's like a little weirdness going on here, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna work with what we got. So I'm gonna scooch this over because that's a little, 
I don't like the, I don't know why it goes straight up like that. Sometimes that happens. So for um, force two, force one, what is the, what is the force at two? All right, here's two. The force is 532. Force at point one. Well, hopefully it's zero. Yeah, so you go all the way to the end, it's zero force. So you're gonna subtract the two. Um, the total deformation, the difference here, how much did it change at point two? Well, then you gotta go down here. Um, what was the original length of the dog bone? Well, you know, I gotta scooch up here. All right, here we go. The original length was one inch, 1.000 inches. Okay. So if I go back down here, how much did it stretch out? Okay, well, here, at the beginning, the dog bone was not zero inches. The dog bone was one inch. Okay, and then if I scooch it all the way over here, let's go to here again. 0 0.0031 inches that's how much it stretched so we're kind of lucky here because we can actually just write down that's how much it stretched okay so remember this is not the length of the dog bone this is the length that it has stretches the elongation all right so write down what in my case it'd be 0 0031.0031 0 .0031 minus zero Okay, so it's pretty easy. I think I over explained it just then. So I'm just gonna tell you, <laughs> this is the Y's, these are the X's. Okay, that's it. I over explained it and I apologize for that. Then L0 is the original length. There's your one inch and the area, the original cross-sectional area, you've already calculated a million times. Well, you've used it a million times. You calculated it before, all right? So, let me clear, clarify here. Force two and elongation two. Force two, elongation two. That is this right here. Here's your force two. I don't know if it's 532. You might pick something else. But let's say 532 for me. That's my force two. My elongation two is 0 0.0031 inches. Okay. Force one and elongation one. That's going to be easy. It's zero, zero. Just to double check here. Original force is zero, and the original stretching or deformation is zero. Times the original length, one inch, divided by the original area, cross-sectional area. You've already calculated that. I'm not going to tell you that one, mostly because I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Um, then it goes into all this, and just a couple notes. Um, you can try a couple of things. Basically, what you can do is you can replace all this. I'm, not, I'm telling you this afterwards for a reason because there's more to come. Uh, this is the slope. Okay. So instead of doing the calculations in the parentheses, you can just get the slope. It's pretty straightforward. Remember how I showed you how to find the slope? Well, do the tangent line. And then if you put the, uh, the line right here, there's your slope, okay? Nice and easy. Computers are nice. Okay, now, letter J. Modulus of, resi of resilience, okay? The modulus is the capital U, resilience is the lowercase r. One half of the yield point stra stress, you already calculated that up above, divided by the strain at the yield point okay so uh what is this well look at this little box right below it okay it's going to tell you how to figure it out the, um, the strain at the yield point is how much did it deform how much was it deformed at the yield point versus what was the original length so what's this yield point strain at the yield point um, Go back over here. Let's get rid of that slope because that's too much information right now. Yield point, oh, hello. Didn't mean to do that. So you decide where your yield point is. Maybe it's right here. This would be the strain at this point. I'm sorry, this would be the, this would be the elongation at this point, okay? So this is what you want. 
at the yield point, that number divided by the original length, one inch. That's gonna give you the strain at the yield point. Take that, multiply it by these two things, and that'll give you your modulus of resilience. That's letter J. <clears throat> okay, then letter K is just to take that annotated graph that you made and add it to your engineering notebook. Okay, ideally you should have a printout and you can just cut it out, paste it in there, tape it in there, whatever. Can't do that? Let me know, we'll work something out. Step two, connect with a peer and review their work for step one. Okay, we could talk about that in class, how we're gonna, how we're gonna do that. But you should get pretty close, if, you guys should be pretty close, okay, with this. Because we're reading a graph, so it might not be perfectly the same. Um, but if you have any major differences, talk it out. Figure out what went wrong for who, and figure it out. Step three is to repeat all of that all the way through K, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K for brass, okay? It's gonna tell you the original length is gonna be one inch again, 1.000. And here's the original diameter of the brass piece. Here's a data file, download it, open it up in uh, the graphical, vernier graphical analysis. So you're gonna have A through K for that one. Another graph, all that stuff. Step four. A through K for steel, in this case. Okay, same idea. Check your work. Okay, you can read all that. Uh, reflection question. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to stop and we're gonna talk about the, the, the additional testing in a different video. I don't wanna get into that, I just wanna stop right here. Um, and that way you can use this to uh, help you through the first part of 2.3.2, I hope. And then of course, if you've got any questions, just let me know, or if you know, you're watching this and you don't have me as a teacher, ask your teacher. All right, good luck. It's not as difficult as it seems up front. If you just gotta take your time. And the trick is to just identify the variables. Okay, identify those variables. And once you do all those Greek letters, everything just makes a lot more, if not sense, then at least you can work with it once you identify those variables, once you identify what all those Greek letters are. All right, well, good luck. Keep up the hard work. Take care.